What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fontes, welcome back to my channel and to a brand new series called Editing Your Photos. Yes, you can send me your files and I'll create a video editing them. Now to be part of this dynamic, you have to go to the other channel, Tony Fuentes, and join the channel membership from a level two or superior, and you get access to the email address where you can send me your photos, your TIFF files, your RAW files, anything that you want, and I'll create a video in both of the channels, editing them. Now it's in the other channel because in this one, Tony Fuentes English, I haven't quite unlocked all those features, or in particular, the membership features aren't available for me just yet. So either way, just go to the other channel, join the membership, and I'll create a video in this one and in the other channel. Now today's video is gonna be the first one, and we're gonna edit two photos that are sent in by Nicolás Ochoa Ramírez, a photographer from Argentina, and they're these two beautiful portraits taken off his friend with a Sony a7 III and a 50 1.8 lens. Now this is the first portrait, and as we can see, this image is tad sharp, great job in focusing the eye, beautiful portrait over here, beautiful lighting, and the second one is this one, another great work, focusing the eye, beautiful portraits, uh, technically they're perfect, beautiful portraits, beautiful model. So. Nicolas was very specific into the style that he wants me to replicate and the style is from Gabriele Vinci. Now Gabriele Vinci is a photographer, a travel photographer from Milan. So we're going to jump into his Instagram, analyze his style and then go to Lightroom, create a preset and edit these two photos that Nicolas sent me. This is Gabriele Vinci's website and as we can see it's a very moody look and he takes a lot of landscape because he's a travel photographer. But if we jump into his Instagram we can see that well, first of all, go and support him, Gabriele Vinci, on Instagram if you want to support him. He also sells his presets if you want to achieve his precise look. But then if we jump a bit down, we can see his portraits. And these two are in particular two portraits that Nicolas sent me to use as a reference to edit his files. Now, if we click on the first one, first thing that comes to mind is those faded up blacks. We can see that black in the Instagram interface is nothing compared to the grayish black that we have in Gabriele Vinci's profile so that's done in the tone curve and then the incredible loss of information in the shadows basically uh, we don't see where the hair really merges with the background everything has a lot of loss information in the shadows again that's done in the tone curve and thirdly we can see those orangey skin tones very reminiscent of Bob Sala style and also Luis class the profiles that we've already analyzed, I'll link it up here in the cards in case you want to check them out. But again, she's very orange to the point that she has some strange coloring in her skin tone, a bit too exaggerated for my taste. But again, this is Gabriela Vinci's style. Then if we zoom in just a bit, very nice and organic film grain. That's another thing that we have to remember. And in particular, this image has a strange cast into the shadows. Now the cast can be created by an ND filter. Sometimes they have a green or purple cast to them, or it could just be done in the color grading part in Lightroom. Now the other portrait that Nicolas sent me is this one, and it's very particular because it's similar to the clothing that one of his portraits has with those yellowish tones. And in this case, the yellows are turned into towards the mustard. So that's the thing we have to remember. Again, faded out blacks, lots of information in the shadows as well. We don't see anything here in the hair. Orangey skin tones, though in this model, because of her skin, uh, she's not too affected by the orangey sliders. And then the greens are desaturated, tending towards those orangey tones and as well, uh, very desaturated. And again, we don't have any blues. Well, we do have some blues, but they're desaturated and dimmed down in the luminance tab in HSL. Another thing that I can see is there's a lot of information in the highlights, but in the shadows there's not. So we're bringing down the highlights, but also bringing down the shadows so we have that very contrasty feel. So I think we have all the things that we have to remember to create his presets. So first of all, we need faded out blacks, then the shadows need to be dimmed down so we lose a lot of information, then orangey skin tones, dimmed down highlights, and then desaturate greens and blues, and then that very nice film grain. So let's jump into Lightroom and edit this style, guys. So let's start off with this one. This is a very beautiful portrait. And remember that preset that we're gonna create is gonna be added into the Edlag preset pack that has all the presets that we've created throughout all the tutorials, including Peter McKinnon's, Alan Pelanders, Pau Claveros, Monalis, all of those presets are in the Edlag preset pack, desktop and mobile version. So if you wanna support me and ensure I can continue to do this, you that's a very nice way you can do it. So having said that, let's jump into the tutorial. So first of all, I want to nail down that tone curve, which is a very important part of Gabriele Vinci's style. So we're gonna create a point in the shadows, a point in the midtones, and a point in the highlights. First of all, what I want to do is bring up those blacks so we have that faded look effect. And immediately we can see those blacks really start to fade out and completely turn into grayish tones. Then the shadows, gonna pull them down below the diagonal so we lose a lot of information in the shadows. Gonna do the same with the midtones and also with the highlights. 
and again the watch is pulling down everything below the diagonal now the image is a lot more flat and we're achieving that very nice image with high contrast okay now in basic corrections remember that white balancing exposure and contrast i like to leave them at zero so those are the three values that we're going to tamper with to uh, apply the preset to this different scenarios and to make it work so these three i'm going to leave them at zero now first of all highlights remember that the highlights the skies have a lot of information so we're going to pull it down just going to pull it down to a minus 20 or something and then the shadows normally what i would like to do is just pull them up so we have a lot of information in the shadows but in this case we're going to pull them down to lose some information so it's just going to go to a minus 19 in this case and immediately we can see how the contrast is affecting and we're losing so much information in the dark parts of the image then white's going to pull them up just to achieve that nice contrast and then finally the blacks we're going to pull them down to continue losing some information not too much maybe something around those lines now in the present step remember we're not going to tamper with any of these values basically because we're talking about portraits so if we zoom in and add some clarity and add some texture we can see all the imperfections all the wrinkles all the freckles on the skin really start to pop up and not, that's nothing that the model will want so just gonna leave them at zero and then we're gonna jump into vibrance and saturation now vibrance and saturation they're quite different i already made a short about it i'll look you up here but in essence vibrance is a bit more selective into what colors it alters so for vibrance i'm gonna go with a minus 13 and in saturation just going to go to a minus five because well saturation desaturates every single color even so i don't want to go too harsh on it okay now we have the overall exposure and contrast that we want now let's jump into the color grading to achieve those skin tones and those faded out colors so we're starting out in the hue what we want to do is just alter a bit of the skin tones which are in the yellow and the orange range towards a more orangey look not towards the green so the oranges if we go to the right everything turns towards the yellows on the oranges and she looks like she's sick with jaundice so i'm just gonna go with a negative towards the tens more towards the orangey tones and the yellows as well for the sweater we want it towards not the greens but towards the mustard like colors now the sweater is a lot more like the colors that we saw on the portrait now in saturation what i want to do is basically desaturate every single color that we saw on the landscape so starting out with the blues and the aquas will control all the bodies of water and also the skies just pull them down to a negatives around there and the same with the aquas then the greens remember the greens were very dimmed down so again we're gonna go to a minus 45 or thereabouts now in this case we don't have any blues or greens in this portrait but they'll work if you apply this preset to landscapes then just gonna desaturate a bit of the yellows to control that saturation on the clothing over here it's gonna go to a minus nine and then I'm not gonna move these two, well, because the skin tones were working to get them towards the orangey tones, don't wanna desaturate. Then again, the blues, just gonna darken them in the luminance tab, and also the aquas. Again, this will bring out a lot of information in the skyline. And then we're gonna just amp up a bit of the oranges and the yellows, just a bit, to make them pop just a bit more. Now, in color grading, we're just gonna add that greenish tint, but I'm gonna leave it to the final part, so it's a bit optional for you guys. So, just gonna jump all the way down to camera calibration and really nail down those orangey skin tones that we're looking for. First of all, the red, we don't want it towards the purples. We want the skin tones to be a bit to the positives. So I'm gonna go with plus five and just add a bit of saturation around the plus 14. And immediately we can see that it's a lot more orange in this case than the original image. We're getting there. Normally I add green primary to achieve a bit more reddish tones in the skin. So for example, if we add some positive green primary, we can see that the blushiness and every part that is reddish in her skin really starts to pop up. We don't want that. We want to go towards the oranges, not towards the pinks. So I'm going to add some blue primary in the negative. So I'm going to go all the way down to a minus 15 or thereabouts. And immediately we can see how her skin is a lot more orange now. Now remember, in camera calibration, you're altering every single color. Every single color is composed of these three colors that we have he here, the RGB. So by altering the blue, we're altering every single color, but also primarily we're altering the blues and the direct opposite in the color wheel, which is the oranges. That's why I went with a negative. Okay, so it's looking quite nice, guys. Now we're gonna add that film grain. I'm just gonna add it to a quantity around 40, 45% and the size as well. We don't want to make it too much, too distracting, but we want it to be there to give it a nice texture. And there it's looking quite nice. Now I'm gonna go to the color grading part and add that greenish tint into the shadows. Not too much, just gonna add it ever so slightly, just like that, with a saturation around the 5%. And we can see that it's there in the shadows, but it's very subtle. 
So the preset is finished, but we're not quite finished editing this photo, guys. So I'm going to save the preset and then I'm going to continue editing this photo. So I'm going to go to the left panel over here under presets, hit the plus sign, create preset. And remember here we can name it, but we don't want to mark white balance, exposure and contrast. Just leave them unchecked and then create the preset. Now I've already added it into the editor crisp back over here. But in this case, what I want to do is further retouch this portrait. First of all, I'm going to really highlight the eyes because the eyes in this model are beautiful and we're losing them, adding, back, adding too much contrast in them in the tone curve. So I'm just going to select the masking tool, then going to select the brush tool, and then I'm just going to color the white parts of the eye. Remember with the wheel on your mouse, you can make the brush bigger or smaller. And with Alt or Option in Mac, you can delete any part that you've already colored. Yeah. So now I'm just going to pull up a bit of the shadows, pull up a bit of the whites to make the eyes pop once again. And then I'm just going to create a new masking tool with a brush. I'm just going to color the iris in this case. Now, once the iris is colored, what I want to do is really pull up a bit of the shadows, pull up a bit of the whites to make those reflections pop, the highlights, but then pull down a bit of the blacks to retain that nice contrast, hit enter. And there we have it. The eyes are very beautiful and really stunning because they are the central part of this subject. Now, another thing that's a bit distracting is this label in the bottom of the cup over here. And what I want to do is use the spot removal tool, which is basically the healing tool that we have in Photoshop, but now implemented into Lightroom. So just going to make the brush a bit big, something like that. And then just drag this to whatever part we want to be replacing the label something like that hit enter and there we have it this image is beautiful now i'm just going to crop it for instagram or i could leave it like that but i'm just going to crop it i want the necklace to be in frame and there we have it a beautiful portrait with wine on our keyboard we can see the before and after and we're really nailing down the style we have those lost of information in the shadows faded out blacks beautiful orangey tones in the skin and yeah very nice film grain. It's a very nice portrait. Good job, Nicolas. Next, we have this image and the edit in this one is going to be very simple. We're just going to apply the preset and see how it works. You can see now that it's in the edit like preset back over here. Just going to select Gabriele Vinci and immediately we can see the effects of the preset and we're losing a lot of information in the shadow, just like in the first portrait that we used as an example. <laughs> the hairline is blending in with the shadows, but if it's a bit too much for you guys, you can always go into the tone curve over here and the shadows just pull this point just ever so slightly up so you have a lot more information in the shadows. Now again, what I would do in this image is just zoom into the eyes, bring back those beautiful eyes of the model once again with the brush tool by first of all coloring the white parts, bring up the shadows and bring up a bit of the highlights just like that. Adding another brush tool and selecting the iris in this case. And again, in this one, bring up the shadows bring up the highlights, bring up the white and bring in down a bit of the contrast just like that. Beautiful. Now we're going to crop it. Now I want to crop it to a 4x5 once again, but I want to give enough room in the head over here, head space. And it just so happens that the rule of thirds is crossing through the eye line, which is perfect for us. There we have it before and after. And it's a beautiful portrait. So I think we really nailed down Gabriele Vinci's style. Again, high props to Nicolas for submitting some very high quality portraits, beautiful model as well. Go and support him. His Instagram is going to be linked down below. And if you want to be part of this dynamic, remember to join the channel membership in the other one from level two or level three, and you get access to the email address where you can submit your photos. Remember that this preset is going to be added into the air like preset pack, which will be linked down below a uh, desktop and mobile version in case you want to support me and ensure I don't starve to death. Other than that, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, can you please give it a like? It actually makes a difference. Consider subscribing, comment down below, share it with a friend if you think they might find it helpful. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.